welcome viewers to another episode in a series of episodes that are focused on extensive revision of the August 2023 Mathematics Paper 1. So if you haven't seen other episodes, please go to our YouTube channel and check for playlists that contains these extensive revision of each and every question from this paper. So questions are grouped in according to the paper and the topics. This it's important for you, especially if you're struggling with a specific topic. You go to a specific topic, you find a series of questions from different papers as far as 2017. If you are new to this channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. If you find this video to be helpful, please consider hitting the like button and share with also your colleagues. Let us look at question 4. Find the gradient of a line which passes through the points negative 3, negative 1 and 0, 3. So, again there will always be a question that will ask you to find the gradient or the equation of the line. So, the gradient is given by the slope of n curve. So, let us say this is in negative 3, negative 1. Then... The other point is 0, 0,3. So what we are saying is we want to find the slope of this one, which is a change in the y value, then the change in the x value, then we compare these changes, is what we call as a gradient. So the question is just asking us to find the gradient. That's all. That's what the question is asking us. So now how do we find the change in y? So the change in y is y2 minus y1. So the same applies for the change in x, which is x2 minus x1. So let us say this is x1. It doesn't matter which one is x1 and which one is y1. As long as you label them properly, you still get it correct. So, once you label them, it becomes straightforward. So, in this case now, to find m, which is the gradient, so it will be y2 minus y1. So, this is y2. So, y2 is a 3 minus what is y1. So, y1 is a negative 1. So, negative 1 in brackets. Watch out for the negatives and the brackets. Then, what is it? x2 x2 is 0 because remember these are the second points these are the first point this is x1 this is y1 so it will be now 0 minus negative 3 which is x1 then you end up with 3 negative times negative is a positive so 3 plus 1 over Negative times negative is uh, a positive, so 3. So this is 4 over 3. So 4 over 3 is the gradient of the line that passes through these two points. Once you do that, you are good to go. So you can say 3 over 4 or 1, 1 over 3. Any of these will still be correct. So this is what you do to get the two max. Let us look at question 5. Shared open bracket A union B close bracket intersection C complement on the Venn diagram in the answer space below. So what does this mean? So there are two ways you can answer this question. So I'm going to explain the two approaches. You still get it correct. Remember, the principle is for you to understand, not memorize. So, what we have is open bracket A union B intersection C complement. So, what this tells us is you need to find, first of all, find A union B. Once you find that, then subtract. Say T. C. That's what it means. So, what is A union B? So, A union B is this. The area I'm choosing. 
So this is A union B. We combine set A and B to form 1. Then, in that set, you subtract, remove everything that is contained in C. So we need to take out C. So the entire C, we take it out from the new set that we've created. So when you take out that, what we are going to discover is we are going to remain with this part out. So our new set now becomes this because we are removing everything which is in C. That's what C complement means. Then at the end of the day, we are going to end up with this shaded region. So we are taking out C. Once you do this, then you are good to go. The other approach is to use distributive law of sets. Distributive law of sets. Again, you still end up with the same answer. So what this is, so this A union B intersection C complement is the same as A intersection C complement, then union B intersection C complement. So again, what this tells us is you go to set A. So set A is this or set, this lead. Then you take out everything which is in C. So everything which is in C is in this one. So you need to remove that part from A. Then you are going to start with A. Then you shade A alone. So when you shade A alone, you discover that this is A alone. Up to here. Then similarly, you do the same. You go to B and subtract C. So subtract anything which is in B but is also found in C. So we are going to subtract the C part. So C part is this side. So in B, we are going to take out this one. So we are going to remain with only this part of B. Then we combine these two because it's in the union. You discover that you still end up with the same answer. So either way, you still get it. So what is key is understanding what is in a complement. So complement means what is not in C. Or what is not in that particular set. Union, you are combining the two sets to form one set. Whether there are three, you are combining them to form one new set. Remember, if there is anything which is repetitive, you don't count it twice. You won't count it once. Then intersection, you are saying what is found in both sets, then you form a new set. Only what is found in both or in all the three sets. So once you do that, you are good to go to get these two quick marks. Remember, every mark is important.